I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto. Reporting for Katie Chats in downtown Toronto with writer director Christopher McBride and executive producer and actor Aaron Poole. How has your working relationship changed and stayed the same since high school? Well, in high school, he used to bully me, uh, <laughs> and now I bully him. Oh, yeah, is that true? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's basically, I, I didn't know who he was in high school. No one really did. He was just sort of a ghost that wandered the halls. So um, I'm not really sure what he's doing here right now, to be honest. But no, we, uh, we were friends in high school, and, um, and we both kind of got into the film industry uh, sort of from different angles and then uh, met up again, and uh, it's been a perfect broma bromance ever since. <laughs> what initially got you really interested in conspiracy theories? Um, it was really a, a friends of mine that were really interested in conspiracy theories that were always trying to convince me to watch conspiracy theory films and go to websites and things like that. And eventually I did. I don't know why. And um, I got completely sucked into it and got, started questioning everything around me and just became sort of a full-fledged conspiracy theory believer. And... Um, Eventually, it just dawned on me that this would make a great world to set a film in. And uh, once I started working on the script, uh, then all of my sort of paranoia and conspiracy theory worries kind of went away because I had an outlet for it all. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, the thing that probably draws me the most is just I, I'm really interested in, like, secret societies and these secretive groups that are sort of out there that people don't really know about. I just find that fascinating. And, uh, you know, whether they're up to something or not, it's not for me to say, but it's it's super interesting that they exist and uh, that not a lot of people know about them. And were you interested in conspiracy theories as well before the making of the film? I was really curious about a bookshop in Toronto called Conspiracy Culture and the fact that it could stay open uh, with such a niche audience. And so I assumed that it was, uh, you know, the, it was obviously more prevalent uh, than I realized. And then when I read Chris's script, I realized that it, it's probably healthy to question where we get our information from. Uh, and certainly the way that Chris was able to weave that curiosity into an entertaining form uh, piqued my interest. As technology advances and becomes more invasive, how do you think that audiences will respond to conspiracy films and how do you think audiences with time will respond to this film? Well, I think, you know, it, it, these days it seems like a new, what was yesterday's conspiracy theory is just today's truth. You know, it's it's happening more and more. You, th you see the, uh, the PRISM scandal that's come out with the NSA and everything, you know, a few years ago, uh, that would be just a conspiracy theory, but now it's out there as truth. And, um, you know, you think about things like the lead up to the Iraq war, you know, like the, the public has been through so much where they were forced to realize that they were fed a lie one way or another, um, that I think people are very susceptible to believing conspiracy theories these days. Um, that doesn't mean they're all true, obviously, but, um, uh, I, you know, sometimes people can be really close-minded. They hear the term conspiracy theory and they just think of nuts with tinfoil hats, but I think it's, you know, it's a lot more complicated than that. There are crazy ones, but there are sort of frighteningly plausible ones, and I, th I think people are very susceptible to it these days. And you mentioned technology. I mean, the internet just fuels that because conspiracy theorists in every city can connect with each other. And, uh, you know, the more people that believe what you believe, the more it validates your beliefs. I think as a culture, we're wise to propaganda. You know, we're not as young as the generation was during World War One, World War Two. We know when we're being fed a story by our government now. Not all the time, but we've got sort of a healthy dose of doubt and curiosity. And I think that, you know, uh, as technology become something that uh, everyone in the world has more access to, we'll have kind of more on the scene reportage. Of course, the NSA is trying to stop that, but um, you know, that's, that's the wish and the hope. The acting in the film was very naturalistic and some of the actors seem to be cast against type a little bit. Can you speak to the casting process and how you made those decisions? Uh, well, we definitely cast a wide net in terms of, uh, you know, who we saw, um, but it was always based on Chris's impulses, um, you know, who, who after, after casting Jim Gilbert and myself, um, you know, Chris sat in on a, many hours of casting sessions. Yeah, I just, you know, I, 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 
just tried to look for people that um, I thought could be as naturalistic as possible. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of good actors, but that's, it's sometimes a slightly different skill to almost be yourself on camera. And uh, so we got great actors like Alan uh, Peterson and people that just, um, Julian, Richings. Julian Richings, um, that uh, that just know how to be themselves and know how to be uh, very naturalistic because it has sort of had to be like that because the film is filmed as if it's a documentary. So you know if there was too showy a performance that might be okay in another movie, it would stick out like a sore thumb here. So uh, yeah, I just sort of looked for that sort of skill in the actors. And why did you choose to shoot it like a documentary? How do you think that it'll help it resonate more with audiences? Well, it's basically just because um, when you look into a conspiracy theory, whether it's online or it's a conspiracy theory film, you're just never sure what you're looking at. You're never sure how much of it is real and how much isn't. And it really sort of messes with you, mess with me, with my mind, you know, not knowing, like, ah, can I trust the conspiracy theorists, but can I trust CNN? I don't, you know, I don't know who I can trust now. So I wanted the film to sort of have that same feeling where it felt like a documentary and you just weren't sure what parts were real, what parts weren't and some people in the film are not actors some people are you know we're just interviewing them mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the conspiracy theories that we deal with in the film are the real conspiracy theories they're not things that I've uh, made up so I, I tried to mix reality and fiction in a way that you sort of walk out of the theater going I, I'm not exactly sure how much of that is real in the age of uh, information it's not always the age of fact, the way we're sort of relating to the outside world is almost always through a filter. It's in the package of a documentary, it's in the package of Wikipedia, or CNN, or CBC, or Katie Chats, uh, but it's always really important to question just how factual is the information that we're getting. And so I think that the structure of the film really plays on, you know, on those questions. And as an actor and character in the film, you sort of have the skepticism and your character changes throughout kind of with the audience. How do you think that that's going to help enable the audience's reactions and how is that going to affect them while they watch the film? I think uh, Chris designed the lead characters really well. You've got somebody sort of embodying skepticism. Uh, and a sense of responsibility to his family. And then you've got somebody who doesn't necessarily have anything to lose in becoming, you know, infinitely curious and possibly irresponsible. Uh, so I, I think that the audience will always have somebody that they can hang their hat on. And what made you make the decision to have these two juxtaposing characters? Well, I, th I think the two lead characters are sort of like the two different parts of my own minds. Mm -hmm. You know, one part of me really wants to believe in conspiracy theories in, in many of them, and another part of me doesn't and thinks this is all delusions. And so, I, you know, I'm never on one side or the other. I'm always sort of devil's advocate. If I hear someone saying they're all crazy people, I will totally argue against that. If I hear someone saying every conspiracy theory is true, I will argue against that. Mm -hmm. So I have these two sort of warring uh, perceptions of the world of conspiracy theory and so these two lead characters one who is more inclined to believe and one who's more of a skeptic are just sort of represent my sort of fragmented view of the whole world and where is the best place for us to find out more information on the film and all the screenings online well this Friday at the Carlton Cinemas it's premiering its uh, Toronto engagement uh, so that's uh, Friday July 19th and you can find tickets through Carlton Cinemas online Thank you so much. Congratulations on a terrific film, and best of luck with it. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks, Katie. Thank I'm Katie Ullman, reporting for Katie Chats in downtown Toronto. Yeah.